There are four inconvenient truths about the consequences of what we've done with our food production. The first one is human health. Second is climate change. The third is food security. And fourth is the planet's resources. So in terms of human health, 80% of all antibiotics in the US are used on factory farms, 50% in Europe. Even a last resort antibiotic like colostin has been found to be resistant in humans and animals, and they say antibiotics don't transfer from animals to humans. On the other hand, they say you are what you eat. The second inconvenient truth, climate change, more greenhouse gases than the whole of the transport sector. Third inconvenient truth, food security. It takes six kilos of plant protein to create one kilo of animal protein. It takes four kilos of wild fish to get one kilo of salmon. I know that sounds bizarre, but you eat more than you weigh when you die. Even the Amazonian deforestation 91% of it is a result of livestock production. We've only got so much land on this planet. Together, these are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It really is a danger. Oh, the consequences of the four inconvenient truths are actually quite dramatic for investors. Businesses becoming much more aware, like Virgin America has now banned the use of, um, of factory farmed chicken's eggs in, on its planes. There is a gap for investors, a knowledge gap that we have to bridge. And that's why we've started an initiative called Farm Animal Investment Risk and Return. We're already at the limits of our meat production and can't cope with the demands for protein. Diversifying protein sources and increasing the plant-based food in our diets is part of the solution. 25% of US population are decreasing their meat intake and especially the millennials are becoming flexitarian. There is a large market opportunity here. Alternative proteins are expected to be one third of the market by 2050. Today, already, half of all Americans are drinking non-dairy milk. Of course, the Mediterranean diet is way ahead, eating less and better quality meat and plenty of vegetables is what the Mediterranean diet's all about. Plant-based diets, vegetarian, vegan, Mediterranean, are all associated with a longer life expectancy increased by over 3.5 years. I just wanted to thank Barilla for their leadership based on their plant-based and Mediterranean diet philosophy. I'm so impressed with the Barilla family who've shown true leadership in this area, promoting plant-based and Mediterranean-based diets. Today, we've got a food technology revolution. So we had in the 1960s, the green revolution, which created the four inconvenient truths, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Today, we've got a food technology revolution. This food technology revolution has just started, but it's going to be a dramatic change in our food supplies. We need more transparent food supply chains. What this is doing is making the food supply chain, animal welfare, and what goes into your meat more transparent for the largest companies. Clear Labs is another example, doing data analysis in the supermarket. Are you given what you're being told? And more food from the local supply chain. We need the largest companies in the world to do more of this. Also, reformulation, Companies like Barilla changing their formulation to reduce the meat content. Obviously, there's been a huge aspiration to eat a lot of meat for the people going from poverty to middle class. But the millennials are 
transforming that aspiration into eating less meat. But that is a barrier. Another barrier is it's got to taste as good. A hamburger is a hamburger. The beauty of things like Impossible Foods is that they've realized that the reason why a hamburger tastes so delicious is the blood. And they found the same molecular structure in a plant root, and it's delicious. At the end of the day, it's about price, taste, and convenience.